In the last lecture, we have studied with you the rotation, uh, the rotational variables uh, such as uh, angular velocity, angular acceleration, and so on. And also, we have studied uh, the moment of inertia. Now, we are going to solve some problems. <coughs> the first problem is as following. A track star runs a 400 meter race on a 400 meter uh, circular track in 45 seconds. What is his angular velocity assuming a constant speed? So, a track star runs around this circle with a, uh, with a constant velocity. Uh, if the velocity is a cons uh, constant quantity, then angular velocity would also be a constant uh, quantity let's uh, denote the radius of this circle as r and the circumstance as s so s is equal to 400 meters and he runs this track in 45 seconds so the period is equal to 45 seconds. What is its angular velocity? <coughs> Assuming <coughs> constant speed, V constant. We know that uh, there is a relationship between tangential velocity and angular velocity that V is equal to omega r. From here, we can find that omega is equal to V divided by R, so uh, we denote it with small r, so let's write it here, r. And the velocity of the particle uh, is constant, so it's equal to 2 pi r divided by t, so it is S divided by t. Right, uh, multiply it one by r. So r they will cancel, and we will find this uh, famous formula, which is two pi divided by t. So two pi is equal to six point twenty eight divided by t. It is approximately forty. So it is exactly forty five. Uh, seconds <coughs> now if we divide these quantities uh, we will get 6.28 divided by 45 which is equal to 0 0.14 uh, second minus 1 And we can also, so this is the end of our problem, but we can also find uh, other variables such as V. So in this case, this uh, tangential velocity is equal to omega r, or we can just write 2 pi, or let's write L divide, S divided by uh, T. So S is given as 400 meters divided by 45 seconds so 400 divided by 45 is approximately 8.9 meter per second you see to find angular velocity we didn't need this uh, quantity the circumstance of the circle however to find a linear velocity or tangential velocity you need that quantity <clears throat> in the second problem again a particle moves 3 meters along a circle of radius 1.5 meters a through what angle does it rotate so uh, let's first draw the picture this is the circle and the radius of the 
circle is 1.5 meters so 3 meters is approximately this point so this side is let's call it L L is equal to 3 meters and the radius of the circle is 1.5 meters <clears throat> through what angle uh, does it rotate so we have to find this angle A so let's start with A to find this angle uh, by definition so we have to divide this arc length L by the radius R so it's equal to 2 radians now B if the particle makes this trip in 1 second B if T is equal to one second at a constant speed what is its angular velocity so now we have to find the angular velocity how do you find that if time is given then we know the distance that the particle travels traveled right so L is equal to V multiplied T so from here V would be equal to L divided by T and it's constant so since L is 3 meters and T is 1 second uh, we know that it is 3 meter per second and to find the angular velocity so it's very straightforward that the velocity of the particle is given and the radius of the circle is also given so the angular velocity by definition it is V divided by R so V is equal to 3 meters meter per second and R is equal to 1.5 meters so we will get 2 radians Uh, sorry, 2 second minus 1. Now, in the third part, C. What is its acceleration? So now, uh, here we have to be clear that uh, the problem, uh, this problem doesn't ask its angular acceleration. It asks its uh, linear, let's call linear acceleration or uh, centripetal. Let's call it uh, the better way is centripetal acceleration. So first, let's look at its angular acceleration. Since omega, uh, which is angular velocity, is constant, we know that the alpha, which is angular acceleration, is also would be zero because it is uh, delta uh, omega divided by delta t when delta t goes to zero right so this is equal to zero now to find the uh, centripetal acceleration a by definition it is equal to v square divided by r and v square is equal to well uh, v is equal to 3, so it is 9, divided by 1.5. So 18 divided by, it is 18, divided by 3, so it is 6 meter per second square. Well, in the next problem, a compact disc rotates at uh, 500 revolutions per minute. If the diameter of the disc is 120 millimeter, a what is its tangential speed of a point at the edge of the disc, and b uh, at a point 
halfway to the center of the disc. So uh, there is a compact disc and it rotates around an axis which is perpendicular to this uh, plane which contains the disc. Uh, let's draw it here. And the angular velocity of the disc is given as 500 revolutions per minute. And the radius of the disc, this one, let's call it R, is equal to 120 millimeters. So first, uh, let's start with the first one, A. We have to find its tangential speed, uh, let's call it 1, uh, at the edge of the disk. So this is the edge of the disk. So let's consider uh, that it is V1. And the, since the radius, since this point is uh, located uh, R, so the radius of uh, the disk is equal to R, so from the rotational axis it is located uh, at R distance. Uh, then the velocity of the particle at that point V1 would be equal to omega R. But now, uh, here you have to be careful with the units. Uh, when you work, you have to always work in the correct units. Here, I mean, uh, with the correct units, you have to go from revolutions to radians, from minute to second, so uh, that, uh, that everything would be uh, easier in that case. So, omega is equal to 500 revolutions per minute so one revolution is equal to 2 pi radian divided by uh, minute so one minute is equal to 60 second and multiplied to r r is 120 millimeters so it is 1.2 meters if we calculate these quantities, so uh, 500 multiplied 2 pi divided by 60, and we have to also multiply to 1.2, so it's equal to approximately 62.8 uh, meter per second. Now, in the B part, at a point halfway to the center of the disk. So we have to calculate the velocity at this point, let's call it V2. And this distance then is equal to R divided by 2. So this is equal to R divided by 2. Let's call it with, uh, denote it with the small r, so it's equal to r divided by 2. And <coughs> the velocity at that point, v2, is equal to omega r. Omega is constant uh, everywhere. In each, each point has omega angular velocity. And it would be equal to omega r divided by 2. So we will get uh, v1 divided by 2. It is 31.4 meter per second. Uh, so our next problem uh, is related to the uh, angular acceleration, which also includes the change of angular velocity so a uh, heroscope slows from an initial rate of uh, 32 radians per second at a rate of uh, 0 0.7 radians per second square 
how long does it take to come to rest? So the initial uh, angular velocity is given as 32 radians per second and the angular acceleration is equal to 0 0.7 radians per second square. How long does it take to come to rest? So we have to find time uh, when the final angular velocity is equal to zero. Uh, so we know that the angular uh, acceleration is equal to d omega divided by dt. From this equation, we have found that uh, d omega is equal to alpha dt. By integrating both sides, we have found the following formula that the final uh, angular velocity is equal to initial angular velocity plus alpha t. Uh, so final and initial angular velocities and also the angular acceleration alpha is given and from this equation we can find t as final angular velocity minus omega initial divided by alpha but we have to take into account this minus sign because this gyroscope is slowing down so it is equal to final angular velocity is equal to 0 minus initial angular velocity is 32 divided by minus 0 0.7 uh, radians per uh, second so we will get uh, 32 uh, divided by uh, 0 0.7 and it's approximately 45.7 uh, seconds <coughs> So, in the next problem, a wheel has a constant angular acceleration of 5 uh, radians per second square, starting from rest, so its initial angular velocity is equal to 0, it turns through 300 radians. A, what is its final angular velocity and how much time elapses while it turns through the 300 radians? First. Uh, we have uh, so the given uh, quantities uh, angular acceleration alpha is equal to 5 uh, radians per second square and then it starts from rest so initial uh, angular velocity is equal to 0 it turns through uh, 300 radians so the final uh, angle is equal to 3 radians so we have to find <coughs> a uh, the final angular velocity and B uh, the time uh, time while it turns through the 300 radians let's start uh, finding Let's start with the B part. Uh, first, we will find the time. Since the initial velocity is equal to zero, uh, angular velocity, the theta phi would be equal to alpha t square divided by 2. And from this equation, uh, we can find t as 2 theta final divided by alpha which is equal to 2 multiplied theta phi is equal to 300 radians divided by alpha it's equal to phi so it's uh, 60 multiplied 2 the square root of 120 seconds so we can calculate it as 
uh, square root of 120 it is approximately uh, 11 seconds now we can find the final uh, angular velocity the final angular velocity is equal to initial angular velocity plus alpha t since initial angular velocity is equal to zero it's just alpha t and alpha is equal to 5 and t is equal to 11 so it's 55 radians per second so the next problem the angular velocity of a rotating rigid body increases from 500 to 1500 revolutions per minute in 120 sec uh, seconds first a we have to find this angular acceleration and then through what angle so theta does it turn in this time what is given so initial angular velocity is 500 uh, okay this is the revolutions per second uh, per minute and the final uh, angular velocity is 1500 revolutions minute so a we have to find the angular acceleration uh, if the okay so t is also given as 120 seconds and then we have to find the angle theta phi so let's start with a part so the angular acceleration by definition it is uh, delta omega divided by delta t in general it is d omega divided by dt since uh, omega uh, if uh, there is uh, if alpha is constant so we can write it as delta omega divided by delta t so since uh, this okay now let's calculate it omega final minus omega initial divided by t and omega final omega final is uh, 150 minus 500 1050 uh, 500 minus 500 divided by t is 112 uh, now so far we didn't take into account uh, the correct units it is given in revolutions so we have to multiply it we have to turn it into uh, radians so 2 pi i have to multiply it and then it is also given in minutes so i have to divide it to 60 now it is equal to 1000 divided by 1 uh, okay uh, 120 and pi divided by 30 if we calculate it so it is 100 1000 pi divided by uh, 120 and divided by 30 So it's approximately 0 0.70 uh, i mean 87 uh, radians per second square now if you want to calculate uh, the angle then theta final would be equal to omega initial multiplied to t plus alpha t square divided by 2 here we have to multiply 500 
with 2 pi divided by 60 so the units would become uh, radians per second multiplied t is 120 plus alpha is of course uh, 0 0.87 divided by 2 and t square 120 square no so if they cancel then there would become 2 so 4 pi it is uh, 20 and 56 multiplied 500 then we will get 6280 plus 0 0.87 uh, multiplied uh, 2 divided by 2 it is again uh, 6 2 6 4 6 2 8 0 oh, and then we will get 12 544 uh, radians <coughs> so this is the answer now in this problem a vertical wheel with a diameter of 50 centimeters so D is equal to uh, 50 centimeters uh, starts from rest so its initial angular acceleration is equal to zero and rotates with a constant angular acceleration alpha is five radians per uh, second square around a fixed axis through its center counterclockwise so let's draw this here okay okay now this is the rotational axis and so counterclockwise means in this direction first a we have to where is the point that is initially at the bottom of the wheel so here at t is equal to 10 seconds so we have to find the final uh, angle initially if it is at the bottom so let's say this is the x-axis so this angle is theta initial let's say this is minus pi divided by 2 and the final uh, angular position would be equal to alpha uh, t square divided by 2 okay of course there is also the initial uh, uh, angular position so it is minus 0 0.5 pi plus alpha t square divided by 2 so alpha <coughs> divided by 2 it is uh, 2.5 so we have to multiply 2.5 to t square 100 so it's 250 uh, <coughs> radians or we, we can also convert this quantity we can write it in terms of pi which is uh, which is approximately 39.8 pi minus 0 0.5 pi so the answer would be equal to uh, 39.3 pi now uh, if we divide this quantity to 2 pi then we will get 19.9 multiplied 2 pi we can also write it 19 multiplied 2 pi plus uh, nine po so one point eight pi.
means uh, that this particle in 10 seconds rotates 19 times and there is also additional angle so 1.9 uh, means uh, 0 0.2 pi so if you divide this into 5 uh, 1 2 3 4 and 5 so this is the uh, final position of the particle so this is pi and this is 1 point until this point uh, this is 1.8 pi Uh, in the second part, what is the point's linear acceleration at this instant? So, now we have to find the, it is linear acceleration. A linear acceleration is equal to V square divided uh, by R or omega square R. Omega, so, the omega is alpha t, which means, okay, let's write it, alpha t uh, mul uh, square multiplied r since alpha is 5 and t is 10 it is 25 and 0 0 multiplied r r is the half of the diameter so it is 25 uh, centimeters which is equal to 0 0.25 meters so it is 25 multiplied 25 uh, 625 uh, meter per second square in this problem a system of point particles is shown in the following figure each particle has a mass of 0 0.3 kilograms and they all lie in the same plane so the masses are the same and they are equal to 0 0.3 kilograms and uh, the distance are also given this is r1 r2 and let's call it as r3 if the system <clears throat> so what is the moment of inertia of the system about the given axis uh, again let's start with the a part moment of inertia is equal to m i r i square so there is a summation uh, with the index i so if i write it in a more complete form so m1 r1 r1 square plus m2 r2 square plus m3 r3 square m is the same for all the particles point particles so we can take this quantity out of the brackets r1 square r2 square plus r3 square now if we insert the uh, numerical values then it is 0 0.3 r1 square it is 0 0.4 0 0.16 plus uh, 0.36 plus r3 0 0.2 0 0.04 so adding them uh, it gives us 0 0.3 multiplied uh, this is 0 0.4 0 0.56 now 0 0.3 multiplied 0 0.56 is equal to 0 0.168 uh, kilogram uh, meter square now if the system rotates at five revolutions uh, per second what is uh, the rotational kinetic energy if omega is equal to 5 multiplied 2 pi so we have to go uh, we have to infer, invert this quantity into radians per second, right? Then it becomes radians per second. What is the rotational kinetic energy? So, as we know that uh, 
rotational kinetic energy is equal to 1 divided by 2 i omega square. So 1 divided by 2 i is equal to 0 0.168 multiplied omega square. So it's 100 pi square. And then we will get uh, so <clears throat> 0 0.5 multiplied 0168 multiplied 100 multiplied uh, pi square. Then we get 80 approximately 83. Let's write 83 joules. Now calculate the rotational kinetic energy of the Earth on its axis. So consider this is Earth. And it rotates around this axis with some angular velocity omega. We know that the mass of the Earth is equal to 6 10 to the 24 kilograms, and the radius of the Earth is 6.4 10 to the 6 meters. So we have to find the rotational kinetic energy. To solve this problem, uh, first let's consider that rho is constant. Uh, I mean the density of the Earth is constant in each point. Okay, so in that case, the moment of inertia of this system of the Earth is equal to. We can consider Earth as a solid sphere. So the solid sphere has an angular, uh, the, mo the moment of inertia, which is equal to 2 divided by 5 m r square. So then after, so m is given and r is also given for the earth. We can calculate the moment of inertia, of course, and then we can find the rotational kinetic energy which is equal to 1 divided by 2 i omega square. Earth rotates uh, 1 times in 1 day. So the angular velocity is equal to 2 pi divided by t, where t is equal to 1 day. So if we insert this quantity into our equation, it becomes 1 divided by 2 i omega square which is 4 pi t square again we have to insert 1 divided by 2 i is equal to 2 divided by 5 m r square and multiply it 4 pi divided okay so this is pi square right so 2 pi 2 pi square is equal to 4 pi square i mean 2 pi square is equal to 4 pi square 4 pi square divided by t square so these two will cancel and we get uh, 4 pi square divided by t square multiplied by m r square 4 pi square is approximately 40 t square t is one day uh, which means 24 hour uh, we have to multiply to we have to convert it to seconds so I have to multiply it 3600 uh, and we have to also multiply it to m m is equal to the 6 10 to the 24 and r square so 6.4 square 10 to the 12 now, uh, let's calculate these numbers, uh, 440 multiplied uh, 6, multiplied 
4 square and we have to divide it to 60 square and also we have to divide it uh, 24 then we will get approximately 0 0.11 uh, and there is also 3 or uh, okay let's write it as 4 uh, now let's calculate the powers 10 to the powers so it is 10 to the 24 plus 12 so it's 36 or we can write it as 11.4 10 to the 20 uh, I mean 34 joules now the next problem calculate the rotational kinetic energy of a 20 kilogram motorcycle wheel if its angular velocity is 120 radians per second and its inner radius is 0 0.28 meters and outer radius is 0 0.33 meters so the mass of the motorcycle wheel is equal to 12 kilograms and the angular velocity is equal to 120 radians per second its inner and outer uh, radius radii are given which is 0 0.28 and 0 0.33 so we have to find uh, its rotational kinetic energy so the wheel is in this shape it's like annular cylinder or we can call it the ring the inner radius r1 and outer radius r2 they are given so first let's calculate its uh, moment of inertia which is i is equal to 1 divided by 2 m r1 square plus r2 square so this kind of shape or ring let's call has the angular momentum uh, i mean the moment of inertia which is in this form so let's calculate 1 divided by 2 m is equal to 12 r1 square 0 0.28 square plus 0 0.33 square so now let's calculate it 2.28 square plus 0 0.33 square multiplied 6 it's 1 point 1 2 kilogram meter square now since we know the moment of inertia now we can find the energy which is equal to uh, 1 divided by 2 i omega square so 1 divided by 2, 1, 12 uh, multiplied omega, uh, 120 square. So we have to multiply it to 120 square and then we have to divide it to 2. So it's approximately 8 kilo joules. So in the next problem we have to find the moment of inertia of the rod. Uh, let's consider this rod has a mass m, total mass, and the total length is of course it's L. Uh, the rotational axis which is shown here is located uh, at R L divided by 6 distance from one of the ends 
and we have to find the moment of inertia of this rod about this axis about this axis so to solve this problem uh, let's take for example dm element so we have to divide this uh, rod into small pieces and uh, let's look at uh, one of the pieces so this piece is looking let's uh, consider this x is x axis and uh, the distance from the rotational axis to this dm piece let's call it x and this small piece has dx uh, distance i mean its length let's call so the moment of inertia of this piece let's call it di which is equal to dm mass multiplied distance square so it is x square and the dm is equal to uh, lambda dx since m so in the previous lecture we have defined the uh, linear mass density which is equal to m divided by l and from here dm is equal to lambda dx now if we insert this into our equation we will get uh, lambda dx so first let's write x square and dx and uh, if we integrate this equation so we will find i which is equal so, so lambda x square dx uh, the integration boundary goes from minus l divided by 6 so this is this point has a coordinate which is minus l divided by 6 and this one has a coordinate as 5l divided by 6 so minus l divided l by 6 5l divided by 6 if we integrate this we will get uh, one point uh, lambda let's write lambda x cubed divided by 3 from l divided by 6 minus to 5l divided by 6 so we can take lambda divided by 3 out of the bracket and we will get 125 l cubed divided by uh, 6 cubed minus so this is uh, with there is also one more minus then it becomes plus l cube 6 to 3 and then we'll get uh, 1 2 6 divided by 3 multiplied 3 to the power 3 lambda l cube and so we can divide uh, we can simplify this equation uh, this expression by cancelling by two so it becomes uh, so 63 so again we can divide it to three so it becomes 21 so again we can divide it to three let's write 21 divided by 3 okay we can also divide by 3 so 36 lambda l cube and so lambda multiplied l gives us m so it's equal to 3 divided by 36 m l square 